Blessed be the name of the Lord. We had some technical difficulty this morning, but we are here ready to study the word of God with you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. To crucify the flesh. Magnify the Holy Spirit. And glorify God. God. Come on and walk with me on this journey as we study the word of God together. Welcome, welcome to a journey into wholeness, cathedral, worldwide ministries where the flesh is crucified, the Holy Spirit is magnified, and God is glorified. And we give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise because he's worthy. You know, this flesh is a mess. It wants to do what it wants to do. And if we allow it to rise up, it will backbite. It will do. It will say it's my thing. I do what I want to do. But when we come to Christ, it's going to be tested and tried. But we have to make we have to make a de conscious decision that we're going to mature in the things of God. Amen. Are you determined to mature in the things of God? Because I tell you, there are things some things are going to come down the pipe that's going to uh, make you want to sit. You're going to sit down for a moment. But that's a time to reflect on what the Lord has already done for you in the past. Because he is the provider. He, will, he is the sustainer. He is he's everything. God is a good God. He's faithful. Even when we're faithless, he's faithful. Because he said in his word, he wished that none should perish. That all should have eternal life. So are you determined once you accept him as Savior, are you determined to make him Lord over your life? Only you can make that decision. You know, the Bible said in the book of Romans, he said, I beseech you, there, chapter 12, verse 1, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. Because of what he did. He sacrificed. He came first as the lamb. He died on the cross. But he rose again on the third day. And he's coming back as the conqueror the second time. He's coming through the clouds. He said, you you know, I did a study. You don't even have to be looking for him, wondering when he's coming, how he's coming. You just have to be ready. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sister Pat, thank you for tuning in this morning. Uh, Birch, Sister Birch, always from Macon, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. We got a powerful word for you this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You know, I'm going to go ahead and sing this old hymn, but you know what? You in your house. But we coming together as a body of believers. So he said, we have come into his house together in his name to worship him. Hallelujah. <laughs> we have come into his house. Together in his name to worship Christ our Lord. Worship him. Thank you, Jesus Christ our Lord. So he said, so forget about yourself, hallelujah, and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself, forget about those problems, whatever you're going through, and concentrate on him and worship him. 
so forget about yourself and concentrate on him hallelujah and worship christ our lord worship him thank you jesus christ our lord so forget about all the problems i have them too <laughs> hallelujah keep past in prayer i'm keeping you in prayer hallelujah because when the Holy Spirit bring you up in my spirit, I'm praying to God be the glory. And the Holy Spirit will make you aware of things. Yes, he, will. he will lead yes. and guide you. So don't think. <laughs> the Lord, he knows all things. Yes, he Pastor Brenda Young, my sister, thank you. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Everybody, hallelujah. We had a grand time yesterday. I tell you, I thank each and every one. Sister Suburban's in the house. We got a great speaker for you this morning. They're giving me a break. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. He, you know, y'all some wonderful friends to have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you doing the scripture today? Or no? Okay. To God be the glory. Well, I'm going to get out the way. I'm just getting some instructions. I know my lane. Amen. <laughs> and this morning, I'm here to serve. What you need, Pastor? What you need, you know? So, you know, you do whatever you call to do. You know, well, I might preach, but I can sit down. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A dynamic pastor coming through. He has a community-based uh, ministry, Pastor. I'm going to let him tell you all that, but he is on fire for the Lord. I tell you, he's, we've been knowing each other since college. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Since yeah. college, we was at John Wesley College together. He was studying uh, theology, and I was—I think he was doing pastoral counseling, mm -hmm. and I was doing a uh, Bible theology and counseling. I was trying to take a double major. It was something, but God <laughs> brought me through. <laughs> but we've been knowing each other for years, so I'm gonna get out the way and present to you, Pastor Dicker. Thomas Dicker. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed Praise be the God. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Let's give God yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Such an awesome, awesome God. We serve all honor and praise to God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Lord of my life, that's why he, he gives us beauty for ashes Amen. and turns our shame into glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is worthy Amen. to be praised. The God of angel armies. Hallelujah. Who wouldn't follow God like that? I give him all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And greetings to everyone on behalf of Journey to Holiness Cathedral Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Charlene Keith. Hallelujah. I am Pastor Thomas Dicker. Uh, Thomas Dicker Ministries out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Hallelujah. We're here um, just helping out my sister. God said, go give us some help. So I've come to give us some help. God bless her. And we're going to bring the word of God forward today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Shout out to Apostle Ellis McKeithen out of Fairville, North Carolina. Some ministries I'm connected with. I oversee uh, Prophet Nikhil Six, Atlanta, Georgia. Prophet is Bonnie Foster, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Pastor Cynthia Davis, Houston, Texas, and Pastor Penny Smith out of Latter, South Carolina. I was down there not too long ago with them sharing the gospel. So we thank God for all of them. And with that said, we're going to move on to the word of God. Amen. To the Amen. word of God. We're going to be coming from 2 Chronicles, 7th chapter, verse 14, King James Version. 2 Chronicles, 7th chapter, verse 14. We're all familiar with that one. And he reads, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. God bless the reading of his word. 
in the end. For subject title, we're going to choose Breaking the Revolving Door of Sin. Breaking the Revolving Door of Sin. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we open this word with your spirit and unity. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you. I decrease as you increase, God. Open the understanding of your people, the eye of understanding, God, that they may know your word is divine and it is true. It's infallible, God, and it is the authority word of God. We speak it today in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. We bless you and we give you praise and honor and glory this day. Speak to your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I like to start with a story that we all familiar with, the prophet Jonah. Prophet, we know the story that God gave him a word to go and he refused to go. But when he finally went, Jonah was sent by God to the ancient city of Nineveh. Nineveh was a pagan city. They worshipped many idols. And the Assyrians had a very barbaric nature, known for overpowering their enemies. Just as, as the young folks would tell me, just too much. Just overdoing. Just, just too much. Amen. <laughs> After passing through the large city for several days preaching God's Repentance message. Jonah finished his assignment to preach to the lost people of Nineveh. And when Jonah was finished, he posted up outside of the city walls because he didn't want to go because he was angry at these people. He didn't like these people. He didn't want God to forgive them because he knew God was a forgiving God. So he posted up outside that wall for 40 days. Amen. Because that's when God's judgment was going to come if they didn't repent. But the Bible says on the judgment that he posted up for, he was looking for God to rain down on them like Solomon and Gomorrah. Amen. <laughs> After that 40 days on those Syrians. However, instead of him seeing God's judgment on them, he saw God's divine word bring a revival. And the Syrians repented and received God's forgiveness. What's the moral of the story? Jonah failed to see that by preaching God's message, he was showing the Syrians God's love. And I come to you today to say, because this message is a challenging message, and this message is a message of deliverance to help us get past some things that we're bound in and caught up in and hindered by. I want you to understand that I preach God's love. And if I don't tell you God's love, then who's going to tell you? We sometimes hinder ourselves from giving the word of God to people because we feel they're going to reject us. But how many of you know, sometimes when you don't bring forth that word to that person, they get caught up in some things and get lost. And then you're at fault and you have to repent. And here's the nature of the thing. David was in sin. He sinned. He killed the man, took his wife, committed adultery and had a child with And God sent the prophet Nathan to him. And the prophet Nathan came to David and used the story. Now, Prophet Nathan had to be bold and had to believe that God sent him because David didn't play. They would kill you at the moment of a second. So he said, David, I want to tell you a story. David said, I'm listening. He said, there was a man who was very wealthy and he owned a cow was on a thousand hills. He had, he had everything he wanted. And then he went and took this man's only lamb. He had just one lamb and he yeah. took it and killed the man. David said, where's the man? I kill him. Yeah. And he said, David, you're the man. So David was convicted yeah. by the word of God. And that's what we have to do. Don't be fearful. Because when you doubt, that's when the enemy moves in. Did God mm -hmm. say that? As soon as you do that, enemy yeah. moves in. When you hear God's voice, you should know his voice. Move and do it. Don't be concerned yeah. about yeah. what people think. Because the power of God is waiting on your obedience. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I said that because in this day, in this season, in this last days, yeah. we need boldness. Oh, we need the church to come forward and do what God is calling us to do. <laughs> no more. No more straddling the fence. No more being weak. We got to stand up and speak God's love. God's word is love. And you ain't got to be angry when you do it. Just speak it with boldness and speak it in love. You ain't got to wait on a determined, see if that's you that I'm speaking to. Speak God's word and walk away. Amen. Let God do the rest. Amen. That's all you're called to do is share love with the people. And that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to share some love with you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before we get to chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles, we're going to cover 6, 5, chapter 5 and 6, building up to 7. 
so we can stay in context here. Solomon was building the temple of God that David desired to build his father, King David. He had finished building the temple of God and desired of his fathers. God was there present when Solomon dedicated the temple. He kneeled publicly. He done an amazing thing. He just kneeled publicly and held out his hands up and he prayed to God and a petition that if they sin, basically, would God forgive them if they turned to the temple and prayed? And the Bible says in chapter 7, as we bring you up the spree, Solomon finished praying, fire fell from heaven and consumed the offering, because God is all consuming fire. And the glory of the Lord entered the temple. Now we pick up here as God responds in chapter 7. And he said unto them, I'll read to your ears again. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and I will heal their land. He answered their prayers by saying, when you sin, if you humble yourself and repent and seek him and turn from it, he'll hear you and he'll come and answer you do two things. He'll hear you and he'll answer you, heal you. Because the first thing, of God doesn't hear a sinner. So you have to repent unless you're crying out to him, then he'll hear you. But God doesn't hear a sinner's prayers. It's just like you pray into the wall because you are not within his kingdom. You have to be within his kingdom to hear your prayers. He know everything and see everything, but to hear and respond, he's not going to do if, unless you're crying out for repentance or help in Jesus name. Amen. 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 amen, amen. We got three points here today. We're talking about the revolving door of sin. And we know a revolving door is a circle. It's a cycle that continues. We're talking about number one, sin. <laughs> what is sin? The Bible says the meaning of sin is lawlessness. Those who do not keep God's commandments to love and do right before God. Righteousness, love and righteousness. So what is sin? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. You're not keeping God's laws. He said the Ten Commandments. Basically, love God, hallelujah, and honor God and worship God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and might. And he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two hang all the commandments. Because the first one is about loving God and the rest is about your neighbor. Basically, he said, love your neighbor. Do not steal from them. Do not take for them. Do not lust after anything they got. Do not go after their, their spouses. Do not go after their lust after their property. And if you love, don't steal from them. If you love them, you're not going to do these things. So God said, now, overall, the greatest commandment is going to be love. And you fulfill all that. And he said, I'll leave this with you. A new commandment. Love your brothers. And by this, then the Bible says we're a liar because yeah. we have to walk in love. God <laughs> is love. Amen? Amen. So we have to stay in love. And that's, that is how we walk with God. That is what the word is, uh, the God is all about. He's about getting us to walk in love so that people can see him through you. Amen. You can be shining light. He said, be a light on a hill. You can't be no light if, you're, if, you, if your light is dark. You can't, you, there's no light when you got darkness in you. You got to shine in love and compassion for God's people. And that's what God is requiring. That's what he's all about. And you're not going to know that if you're not spending time in a relationship with God. Amen. James said this, those who know to do right, and to do wrong unto them, it is sin. <laughs> Righteousness. Amen. Righteousness. For what? Because lawlessness is sin. So lovelessness is what? Sin. Amen. Sin. Praise God. Amen. Lovelessness. God is calling us to walk in love. And it's impossible to walk in love if you're all upset and you're all fixed up in a uh, unforgiveness and you're walking in a bad way. You've got to walk in the love. And that's what he commands us to do. You know, hunger and thirst after righteousness. Do what's right. You know, if if somebody, if you're in the room with me and you know that this is my phone and you intentionally take it from me and walk out, to you, it is sin. Amen. You knew you were wrong. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we, and some of us on our jobs, uh, they owe me something. We start taking stuff. <laughs> yeah, they, to you, it is sin. Amen. It is in your heart. You know what's wrong. It bears witness with your conscience. First Timothy says this, realizing the fact that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for those who are lawless and rebellious. 
for the ungodly, for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who kill fathers and mothers, for murderers. Realizing the fact that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for those who are lawless and rebellious. My college professor, when I was in criminal justice, said this to me, the law is not made for those who keep the law, it's made for those who break the law. That's what he's saying here. The law is made to keep those who sin right. If you follow the law. Amen. Amen. If you follow God's law. The law makes Amen. Sin, yeah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God. Preachers in the room. Oh, no. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteous is born of him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God requires us to be holy. Amen. He requires holiness. And it's, I know today holiness is taboo and nobody wants to talk about it. They don't take all that. And, 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 you know, it's not politically correct to talk about holiness now. Everybody wants to do follow their own ways, their own morals, set up their own standards. But God is requiring a holiness. He said you have to be holy. That means set apart. Set apart in his will. Set apart. From things of the world. Transfer, transform your mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. By renewing of the word of God. Transform yourself. Set apart in the things of God. Dedicating yourself. Consecrating yourself to the things of God. You have to be set apart. Because here it is. This is what we have now going on in the last days. The church is compromising. They're saying it don't take all that. You don't have to be holy. I can come to your party and hang out. And you see what happened. When, huh. when the major pro uh, pastor went to a big party. Don't be hanging out where you're not supposed to be. Amen. <laughs> Don't be doing things because the world says it is okay. God says it's not. And he will expose you. Amen. 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 So we have to do what's right. I'm not saying don't go to your family reunion. I'm not saying that be a light when you go there. I'm saying don't be somewhere where you ain't supposed to be. And you know where you're not supposed to be. You know right from wrong. To him that know to do right and do it to him is wrong. Amen. 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 Consecration. Amen. Consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. The father of lawlessness is the devil. Going about to deceive the world of un to do unrighteousness and sin. He is a liar, a thief, roaming about, seeing and who he can destroy. He is the father of lawlessness. He will not walk in love. He is not in him. He's evil and he deceives the world. He goes about to deceive the world to walk in lawlessness. Amen. Amen. Don't father, don't follow the father of lawlessness. Follow God who teaches righteousness. Amen. Amen. I say it again to all you who are working in the flesh of witchcraft. Mm. Follow after God. Follow not after Satan. Satan's only a fallen angel. Amen. He's only a fallen angel. When Satan is bound for a thousand years, it's only going to take one angel to bound him. He goes around bragging about who he is and how much power he's got. And all Jesus got to do is show up and show out. Amen. Because he's the light of the world. Amen. He's all powerful. You don't have to brag about it. He just got to show up. And we all in his presence will fall down because he is God hallelujah. all by himself. He don't have Thank to put you. up. Hallelujah. No signs. Here I am. He is it. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Praise God be yeah. the, the Bible says that in Solomon, Gar Solomon Gamar, because of lots, saw and heard that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day for the lawless deeds. He was tormented in his soul because of the unrighteousness that was going on and the lawlessness. There was no love. They were hating, killing, violence, kind of like we see today, murdering one another. There was no love, and they were going about doing it without care, and it grieved him viciously, and God rescued Lot out of that sinful cities. Amen? We are sometimes put into similar situations, but God says, stand and know that I am God. Amen? Amen. Show your love. Walk in righteousness. Don't compromise your walk to get along with anybody. Prove nothing to anybody. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Know who you are. Be sure of who you are. Be sure of, who, that's why he says, be rooted and grounded in love. Amen. Amen. So you can walk it out. Amen. Amen. The people who call by my name shall humble themselves. Hallelujah. Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked days. Then he will hear from heaven and heal their land. He's going to do two things, hear and heal. Amen. Because we all have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. 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 
Turn from your wicked ways. The Greek word used here is metanoia. It's a militant word. It means about face. In the military, when you do about face, you're looking at the palm of my hand. You take your body 180 degrees. That means you turn opposite way of, of the clockwise direction. You turn opposite way. If you're walking in sin and you know you're in sin, do about face. Turn back to Jesus. I was going down the street the other day and I missed my location because I, I, I was in another city. I had to make a U-turn. And come back to it. If you strayed away from God. And you went after things that were not of God. Turn around. Make a U-turn. Come Amen. back to God. Amen. God, God loves you. And he desires that. And he wants you to have the goodness of, of the Lord. He wants you to have the best. Maybe at the time you didn't feel like. Amen. That everything was going your way. Maybe at the time you didn't feel, you lost a loved one. I don't know. And maybe you felt like God was at fault. But I promise you this. If they were living for God, they were ready. God took them because they were ready. He's giving you time to get ready. Amen. Amen. So praise God when a loved one goes on. Amen. Amen. He will blot out your sin. He promises it to blot out your sins when you repent and turn back to him. Yeah. He erased the chalkboard with all your sins on it. Amen. Amen. And push it far as the east is from the west. <laughs> and he will see them no more. I don't know about you, but when I was repented and, and in my heart I felt this weight lift off me in yes. the spirit realm amen mm -hmm. all that sin that he took my sins upon himself amen and he remembered it no more and I was light and I always wondered about that what was that I felt and I've heard people say it many many times how sin was lifted off them amen point one sin point two unforgiveness mm. this is a very important topic reason why unforgiveness is so important because it is the underlying for evil sin in the world. It is the underlying cause of evil and sin in the world. Why? And lawlessness. Why? Because if you ain't unforgiveness, you're not obeying God's commandments. So you're what? Lawless. Because his commandment is to love. Mm. Evil comes from unforgiveness. Bitterness gets in there and you do evil and you forget God's way and you go about doing whatever comes to your heart <coughs> led by not the spirit of God but by your own flesh and by Satan. Sin. You would do sin because you're already breaking God's law. Amen. I said that already. When, <laughs> unforgiveness. When you are unwilling or unable to forgive from the heart someone for upsetting you, betraying you, or breaking your trust it is to you unforgiveness. That comes from being unable to let go. You know, some things hit you so hard. It's, it's hard to forgive. I've been there. It's hard to forgive. But it is commandment to let it go. Because God cannot use you when you're in for unforgiveness. Unforgiveness hinders a lot in your life. If you're not careful, unforgiveness will hinder your prayers. Because God is a God of love. And he told you to forgive and love. How can you pray with love. How can you play with sincerity for somebody else if you are in unforgiveness and bitterness? You've got to let it go. It's a serious no, and it's a trap of the enemy. Our souls are vexed because of unforgiveness. Paul urged the Corinthian church. He says, put that boy out. How can you be upset? I mean, how can you be happy with him when he slept with his uh, father's wife? Mm -hmm. He's, but he comes back in 2 Corinthians. You tell him mature, and he goes, restore him, comfort him, Unless sorrow fills his heart and you be found in unforgiveness. Mm. Amen. We're not deceived, he says, by the father of lies, schemes, designs, and traps like unforgiveness. He trips most Christians up with unforgiveness. Satan has some of us so stuck so far in the past that we haven't caught up with our maturity and our adulthood. Because we're stuck right there. We mm. lost a part of us. That traumatic event that happened so bad. And he, he holds us right there. Mm -hmm. We have not moved past that. And it shows in our character. In our attitude. And our heart has been going in a down spiral ever since. You know sometimes people look at you and say is everything okay. Because you look so bad. You, it's like you're never caught up. Thomas number. When I was four years old. If something happened to me. It's like I never caught up with Thomas at 59 now. Never caught up with him. 
because the little boy comes out every now and then and I throw a temper tantrum. And they say, what is wrong? That's, I'm using myself an example of what happens when Satan holds us back. He hinders our soul when he's something traumatic happening. You have to let it go. It is a commandment of God. You cannot love if you are in unforgiveness. It's impossible to love. It's impossible to pray for somebody with love because we're supposed to pray with compassion for one another. Amen. We're supposed to walk in love and it's impossible. It's unforgiveness in your heart. It's impossible because you're going to set some barriers up. You're going to put some borders up and you're going to make some packs. You're going to make some decrees, declares that I'm never going to let nobody in my heart. You cannot do that. You understand? You have broken God's commandment to love. You can't do it. You have to let it go. I know it hurts, but you got to let it go because it's going to heal you and it's going to heal somebody else. If you're waiting on somebody to come back, hallelujah, and, and apologize, if you're waiting on to somebody to confront them, it's not going to make things better. Revenge is not going to make things better. Only way to make it better is do about face and go to Christ. Seek God who's got your healing. He's got your healing. If you trust them, amen. You got to seek God. You got to let it go. You know, things I see about unconditioned, it happens. A couple things happen. The condition of our outward body and character is a direct indication of the condition of an inward man. The condition of your outward body and character is an indication. I mean, a direct indication of the condition of your inward man. A lot of people, I've been in ministry over 20 years now, and I pray for a lot of sick because one of my gifts is healing and deliverance. And a lot of people, 99.9%, .9 now listen up, listen up, this doesn't mean you're a bad person, has demonic activity going on, either in their body or their soul or influence somehow on the outside. That doesn't mean you're a bad person, but there, if you hold on to unforgiveness, you see what you've done? You gave Satan, that's one of his the, the, the traps, to get into your life. You gave him an open door. You've given him an open door to get into your life. You know, some days we go to somebody and they're having a great, uh, joyful day. And we may see them next week and they barely speak to us or, or they're angry about oh. something. And then you go next week, they're happy. You go the week after that, they're back to the old grouchy self. And you wonder what in the world is going on. You know what it is? Because you're going in a circle. You're a revolving door of that sin because you have not let go of the unforgiveness. And so Satan is coming in and out when he get ready. You're going in a circle. It's like if you have, if, if somebody could give us an x-ray of your souls, of our souls, it would, some of us would have spots all over our souls, black spots. And some of us would be pure black if though we've been smoking cigarettes all our life because the unforgiveness create layers in your soul. Hallelujah. It creates layers into where it shows in your attitude. And a lot of us are sick because of it. We're sick because of unforgiveness. What is going on inside of you shows outwardly. You know, I, I used to do a little garden every now and then. And I hired the guy to come dist up my land and I would set out my little seeds so many inches apart. And I would water them and, and the sun give its light to them. And in the right environment, they start coming up. Some plants already, collops already above the ground and everything starts taking care of everything looking good. But every now and then you go out there and one is starting to look bad. And, mm -hmm. Well, it can't be that it's not getting enough water, enough sun because the rest of them are standing. What's going on here? And you, you kind of diagnose the situation and you look. If we could look down in that ground, what's going on? We see the body, but what's going on down on the inner side? Mm. Probably a worm attacked that plant and killed it. Now we couldn't see that. Because it was on the inside of the dirt. But we saw it on the body as it wildered and died. We have to deal with unforgiveness. We have to. It is a sickness. It's a disease. We have to deal with it. We have to let go. We have to ask God to help us get go of it. Because I agree that some of us want to let go. But we don't know how. The thing is so painful and terrible that happened to us. And we don't know how to let go. But we got to let it go. It is a commandment to love. Amen. To love your neighbor. You've got to let it go. It will bring stuff out of you that you didn't imagine. The longer you hold on to it, the ruder it gets. And you know about roots. Mm -hmm. I've seen trees that sometimes are so rooted that they run up on the house and bust the foundation. Roots grow. And if that thing grow in you, 
the bitter you get, the more hold Satan has on you. And you can't become the woman and man of God that God has called you to be. You can't love your family like you want to because you don't know how because somebody's hurt you and you don't know how to reverse it. But God is able. Jesus has done it on the cross. He's already done it for you. Let it go. Amen. 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 Look, the medical professional books documents unforgiveness as a disease. Mm -hmm. I already knew it. I saw it again and again. They said that unforgiveness, now they're saying that unforgiveness is a disease. According to, and just, just one person, according to Dr. Stephen Stanford, chief of surgery at the Treatment Centers of America, refusing, refusing to forgive makes people sick and keeps them that way. He said it makes them sick and it keeps them that way. This is the medical books. It's documented. Mm -hmm. And it's you can find it again and again in research, which I saw all this while in ministry, that unforgiveness makes the body sick because you hold on to it long. Satan gets a hold. He attacks your body because you left him that right to do that. That's why you have to forgive. He comes all the time trying to offend us. All the time trying to offend us. So we can hold on to that thing. And you know you're holding on to it because when that person comes in their presence, you shaking and you don't want to look at them. You don't want to talk to them. You know what's going on. You got to deal with that thing. You got to deal with what's in your heart and ask God through the Holy Spirit to help you because you have to let it go. You don't want a, a, a root of bitterness springing up in your heart. You don't want that. You, for now, we got outbursts of people killing people, just doing crazy things. And it's, it's underlying cause. It's unforgiveness. Somebody hurt them. Somebody done them wrong. Somebody broke their trust and they held on to it and today couldn't see no more. All they saw was darkness and red and they wanted revenge and they took it out on the first person possible. Because sometimes if you wait on them to confront them, sometimes they die. They pass on. Mm. You got to deal with that thing. It's not going to matter. They probably won't <clears throat> receive it anyway. They're right? like they don't know anything. So all do say in this, forgive and let go. Amen. Amen. Forgive and let go. For God loves you. He loves you. Amen. Amen. One of the things Jesus talked about was purification. Baptism represents, represents purification of the spirit. You know, when we get baptized in that water, it says that we died with Christ. Amen. 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 You know, you have to be cleansed in the heart. Christ was coming to represent the sacrificial lamb, sacrificials that was done in the tabernacle. Yeah. He was coming to show, and he all, God always requested a lamb less than three years old and a good health without spot or wrinkle. A lamb of three years old without any hate in him, without any anger in him, without any uh, unforgiveness in him. God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He wants you clean and pure on the inside. And he's requesting that we be made pure. For only the pure and the holy will see God. Mm -hmm. Only the pure and holy. He's talking about your heart. It's a heart issue. you got to deal with the things that are in your heart. you got to fast. you got to pray. you got to call on the God of glory who can do it through the Holy Spirit. He sent him to teach us, to heal us, to deliver us. Amen. we got to deal with unforgiveness. It's important to be pure in your heart when God comes back. It's a trap of the enemy to hold you back. He wants to hold you back and not be the man and woman God has called you to be by keeping you in that unforgiveness. But if you will, just let it go. If you will, just seek God for help. Yeah. He will deliver you. Fast and pray. He says some things don't go without fast and pray because some things happen to you. Some of you were raped. Some of you were molested. Some of you were just abused in some terrible ways. I can't even give testimony sometimes for the worst. I've heard the worst. Amen. When I thought I've heard the worst, I've heard worse. So I've learned, hallelujah, that people go through things. Amen. And they may not show it or talk about it, but in their character, it shows up. And they have to deliver that situation to God. You've got to give all your burdens. Hallelujah. Everything must go. Hallelujah. Everything must go. Because John the Baptist came teaching, you know, he says, we must be baptized for purification. And in water, it represents what happens to you on the inside. When you get baptized in the public, hallelujah, you're saying to them, I'm no longer that old person. I am new, hallelujah, in Christ Jesus. And I'm going to live a new life, and I'm going to live through the life of Christ Jesus and through hallelujah. the lenses of Christ Jesus, amen. amen. So he baptized them, saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is coming. And after that, he led the way. Jesus followed. Amen. Jesus baptized with water, the Holy Ghost, and fight. Amen. 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 For purification. Amen. Amen. And said the kingdom of God is here. Yes. Hallelujah. 
So God has sent the Holy Spirit, our counselor, our comforter, our teacher, yes. our, our deliverer. He's with us, our protector, amen, to teach us all things, to teach us how to walk this thing out. Because it's a process sometimes, amen? amen. It's a process. Even if I cast out spirits, a lot of times people have to go back and get some kind of healing, get some kind of counseling. You have to deal with whatever you was holding on to because I let you free now and the enemy is gone. But he's walking through dry paces, yes. looking for a place. And if he can't find one, he's coming back to your house and see and Ooh. check it and see if you got the Holy Spirit, if you got healed from your wound. He's checking it. And if you ain't healed, he find that thing nice and clean. He's going to get them seven more and come and say, we got a home. Come on. I know where home is. They're going to come in you. You're going to be worse than you what you was. I can cast out all the demons all day long. But if you don't seek some counseling. You don't get some healing. It's just going to get worse. Amen? Amen. So praise God. You have to deal with your inner problems. That's deliverance. That's healing. Amen. Amen. Pastor Charlene deals in Christian counseling. She counsels a lot of people because you have to start with the root of a thing. You got to pull it up by the root. I cut a tree down last summer. It's it a pretty good size, about big as my fist. Stood a little taller than me. And I cut all the limbs down. And by towards the end of the summer, I got a little busy. You know, I looked back there, that thing was almost back up. I said, what in the world? <laughs> because I didn't kill the root. I just cut the tree down. Uh, that thing grew right back just that fast. If you don't kill the root, I could deliver you. We can deliver you all day from demonic forces. But if you don't get some kind of healing, you don't get some kind of counseling, you don't ask God to show you what's wrong with you so you can let it go, so you can get healing from it, then you're going to leave an open door for Satan to come back. You don't want him back. We don't want them back. Amen? Amen. Get your healing. Get your deliverance so you can be pure in your heart. Amen? David said, <laughs> give me a, renew in me a clean heart and give me a right spirit. Amen? Oh, Lord, renew in me a clean heart and give me a right spirit, oh, Lord. Amen. That's what we want. Amen? Jesus, hallelujah, signifying what it would take for the people to come into his presence. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 10, Jesus parted the Red Sea. Amen. He was in a cloud above. With his miracle working power, he turned the Red Sea into a baptism pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he baptized the nation of Israel as they passed under. Hallelujah. He was showing us that we must be cleansed. It wasn't just about separating the Red Sea to get away from the enemies. He was delivering them from the enemies. Amen. Altogether, because that's what happened when you receive salvation. You were just delivered from the powers of darkness. He baptized them. He cleansed their inner parts. Hallelujah. By the water. A baptism. So water represents cleansing of the inside. Amen. We have to be cleansed. And one of the first miracles he's done, verifying it again when he was on earth, was what? He took water pots for purification and did what? Turned it into wine. What was he saying? When you take communion, you have to be pure. Because Paul says, for this reason, some of them are dead. Mm. you got to be right with God. He yeah. wants your inner heart. He's after the inner man. God is about love. He's not about all of this foolishness going on. Yes, he is a God of judgment. Yes, he will judge sin. That's how holy he is. That's what he's telling you. You can't come into God's presence with no mess. you got to get it right. you got to let go because you're telling God every day you pray, God, forgive me as I forgive them. But yet you haven't let go of them yet. How is he going to forgive you? You're not right. Get yourself right. Quit pointing the finger. Quit talking about everybody. Get yourself right. Get in that mirror. Do it. What they say? Check up from the neck up. <laughs> and get it right with God. Get it right hallelujah. with yourself. Hallelujah. Get it right. For God's looking for a church. Uh, hallelujah. Without spot or uh, wrinkle. God Amen. Be the glory. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to move to point three. My final point. Point one. Sin. Point two, the underlining of sin is unforgiveness. And point three, and Pastor Charlene can testify with this one. I think her church was founded on this. It was the moral of the church. Crucify the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Crucify the flesh. It means to die to your own self-will and obey God's will. Basically, that's what it means. Die to self and obey God's will. Our old soulish, endemic nature which is against Christ, mm -mm -mm. wants to fight the spirit of God. It don't want to do right. It's a can't get it right spirit. So hallelujah. That old nature, you know how you got saved and we thought we could walk this walk and we wouldn't sin no more and we wouldn't do wrong no more. But then that old nature rose back up. 
if we didn't get into the word of God, if we didn't fellowship with other Christians that told us how they came, overcame, if we didn't get filled with the spirit of God, we end up doing some things we shouldn't have done because we wasn't walking with the spirit because you need help. Amen. And that's what Paul realized. He said, who can deliver me from this old body of death? He said, when I want to do right, I do wrong. He said, I don't understand this. He said, I need help. Hallelujah. So God sent the Holy Spirit. He said, hallelujah. He said, I follow. Amen. The sin, hallelujah, with my flesh, but the word of God with my mind. You know, a lot of times you need deliverance in your soulish realm as well as your body. The body's not going to get healed until you're delivered sometimes in your soulish realm. That's where it begins. Amen. It begins in your mind. Hallelujah. It begins in your spirit. Amen. God has to deliver you from all those things that you went through. And sometimes it's a process. It takes a while to get to all. He can't do everything in one day because some of you couldn't take it. He could take you a while to get there. But if you seek him, he'll make you right on the inside. He'll cleanse you up. He'll make you new. Amen. Bring it to him. He loves his people to be made right so that you can fellowship with God. You can't come into his holy presence with all that junk in you. You got to get that junk out of your trunk. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Crucify the flesh. We must. Hey, Amen. She said, I, if, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. And take up the cross. Now the cross represented death. We know that. It represented death. The Romans used the torture of the cross. To inspire fear of authority. And respect for the law and order. They used it. So we know it was. It represents death. When he says take up your cross. That means die to thyself. Amen. And follow after me. He said let it all go. All that old stuff you used to do. From your old nature. Let it go. Now follow after me. Amen. Crucify has various meanings, but in this case, crucify and, and mortify means not just practicing temperance and self-control, a temporary change, but we must kill our old fleshy desire. Amen. That old nature must die. It must go. <laughs> if, if you will, we must assassinate our old nature and its desires and its affections of what it won't. We got to let go. We got to kill it. Amen. We're not just dealing with it and do it temporary. We got to kill that thing. And how do we do that? Through fasting and prayer. The Bible says, hallelujah, we crucify the flesh. Hallelujah with Christ Jesus. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, abstain from the works of flesh. And this is what results. This is how you know your flesh is rising up and it's working. Adultery, committing adultery, fornication, uncleanness, hallelujah, excessive affection, evil sexual desires, seditions, hearsays, envying, murders, hallelujah, taking property, uh, lusting after property, uh, lusting after uh, your neighbor's uh, spouse. The Bible says this is also adultery. This is also idol worship. And any area of the life that makes the person's spiritual life more difficult is works of your old nature. It's works of the flesh. I, 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 you know, the one that got my attention was witchcraft. We see a lot of people dabbling in witchcraft today. It's a popular thing to do. The witchcraft and the cult. But it's not even the devil that's got you into it. The Bible says it's the works of your flesh. It is the works of your old nature. You see, you must you must deal with that thing. You must kill it because it'll rise up and be something against God. And we don't want to fight against God because God is all-knowing, all-powerful. Hey, he can be everywhere at one time. You do not want to have to fight against God. Witchcraft is against God. You're calling yourself Christians and you're putting salt around your door. You're calling yourself Christians and you're burning sage in your house. You can't do the same thing that the evil witches and that the uh, uh, cult does and call yourself a Christian. You got to trust God for what he's called to do. Excuse me. You can't do the same practices. You can't study horoscopes. Talking about your, I'm a Taurus, I'm, I'm an Aries, I'm a Libra. And I read it today and it says, I'm going to do this. You might as well go on to a psychic. And you know what a psychic is? All they do is deal with familiar spirits. Each one of us are assigned a familiar spirit. Each one of us by Satan to watch us from childbirth. So they'll know our habits and they'll know our ways and they'll know how better to manipulate us. And all happens when you go see a psychic, a witch doctor, is that their demon is talking to your demon. <laughs> their familiar spirit is talking to your familiar spirit. Amen. That's all it is. And they cannot... That's why they're accurate because they know about you, but they can't 
predict the future. What they'll do is go out and make the future happen. Amen. But you want to get it from God who knows the future. He knows who you are. He has a hope for you and he loves you. He wants you to have a prosperous life. Amen. Trust in the Lord. And with all you understand, lean not to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust Amen. with God. Amen. He will pull you out of whatever you're in. Most men <clears throat> don't know that the cross death doesn't result from blood loss. It results from suffocation. You know, they put those nails in their, in their hands and their feet and they have to push up to get air because their lungs are collapsed and they have to push up to get air. And they do this guy may go through this for several days. And so it's like you had a heart attack when you found it. It's like you drowned. That's why the Bible says we 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 die the death of the cross when we get baptized because it was like Christ died on that cross. Hallelujah. When he suffocated, it was the same thing. You suffocate under water. That's what the Bible says. We died with Christ. We crucified with Christ. Yeah. And we get in our affections thereof. Hallelujah. We must allow God to do it. You know, Paul says that the Again, he says the spirit wars with the flesh. There's a battle going on inside you. Amen. They're warring, man. There's two soldiers in there. You got the army of the Lord and you got the army of Satan. Your old nature and the spirit of living God is in you now. And the old nature is saying, let's go out and do something we ain't supposed to do. And the spirit is saying, don't you do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a war going on in you. You have to make the decision. It Amen. is your choice. To follow good or bad. To him that know to do right and do wrong, it is to him sin. Amen. Amen. You got to follow the spirit of the Lord. Him that is led by the spirit of the Lord, how what? Is his. Amen. You got to follow after righteousness. You got to walk in the spirit. It means, it means following the Holy Spirit. Doing what's right. You know what's right. Amen. God said he put his laws in our hearts. He, we know what's right. Nobody, after you become a certain age, your accountability kicks in. Amen. And you know what's right. You know what's wrong. That's why you get your parents to teach you what's right. And what's wrong? They pop you on your hand. They give you a little discipline on your behind when you're doing wrong. And that's what God uses to bring you into character, to bring you in line with his word, to follow morally. You know, I, I, I wrap this up saying this. This day and time, nobody wants to die to themselves. They want to please themselves. Men are more about, and, and, and women are more about pleasing themselves than pleasing God. We have to die to self because if we're going to make it into heaven, we have to die to self. <clears throat> Years ago, and I haven't shared this with many people, God spoke to me and he said, Thomas, I want to take you to hell. And I said, ooh, Lord. He said, I want to take you because I want you to tell people about it. He said, I want to witness. I want you to witness about it. And I remember dreaming that night on my bed. All of a sudden, I was standing on snow and I began to go down. Hell is in the center of the earth. I began to go down and I began to go in this tone. It was dark, pitch black, the blackest light you can think. But for some reason, I could see. In the spiritual body, you could see everything. And I remember these big, long snakes brushing up against me as I was going down. Mm. And I don't like snakes. I was like, eh. and I'm going down and going down. But I knew the Lord said, I got you. All of a sudden, boom, I was there. It was this bright white. And I was in a cell, but without bars. And I couldn't move. The Bible says we have our moving and our being in Christ Jesus. Without God, you, you breathe in his air. You can't move. Your body, I could not move. I was stationary. But I was sitting forward like I'm looking at you. And there was demons behind me tormenting me. And I could not turn around because there was no strength in me. Without God in this, this life... We're breathing and moving because of God. That's why I say give God thanks every morning you get up. We are moving on this earth because of God. And without God, you're separated from God in hell. You can't move. You can't breathe. And you're being tormented. It was a place of torment. I couldn't turn around to see what they were doing. I knew they were dirty and making noise. They was picking at me, poking at me. I couldn't do a thing. I couldn't even move. Hell is a place of torment. I didn't get to see the fire. I didn't get to see the other levels. But I saw enough to know I don't want to go there. And I don't want none of you to go there. It is a place of torment. However, they torment you. It's going to be worse than anything on earth. That's not a place that you want to go. That was meant for the devil and his angels. 
not for human beings, but because we will not follow God's commandments, fall in line and love like he's calling us to do. He will say, I don't know you. A lot of you are not helping people that is on the street. They're asking for money and you choosing to judge them. Where's your compassion if you were in God? God said, give it to them if they ask for it. He said, give you all your money. He said, give them, give them some. Amen. He said, if they need a coat, give them a coat. You got some clothes at home that you don't wear. Help them out. Matter of fact, get something new. You don't want some old mess somebody got, don't want no more. Bless them. You see them with kids. Feed those kids. Why are you worrying about where they working or, or what they doing? Bless them. Where is your compassion? God says this. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me when I was sick. He said, when I was hungry, you didn't give me nothing to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. And you're going to say, when did we do these things, Lord? He said, when you've done it to Lisa Mines, you've done it to me. You are not able to love without letting everything go, without crucifying that flesh, without letting unforgiveness to go. you got to let sin go because it is a revolving door. Season after season after season, you're doing the same thing, same thing. You're going in a circle, a revolving door. That sin keeps coming in and going out, coming in and going out. Satan has total access to you because you have not obeyed God to love. And I say this to you and I come to you in this, this compassion. If you had a choice between heaven and hell, and my right hand represents heaven, my left hand right represents hell. If you had a choice between a brand new Mercedes Benz, which one are you going to choose? The Mercedes Benz? Or are you going to choose that old bent up station wagon? Which one? Tore down, raggedy, barely can make it windows in there. Which one are you going to choose? $100,000, $500,000 home. Mm -hmm. Listen up. If you had a choice between heaven and hell, which one are you going to choose? Mm -hmm. That is my open invitation to you. Journey in the wholeness represents crucifying the flesh. I come to you today to say, if you don't know God, and if you're not living right standards with God, and you, are, you don't know how to forgive, come to the altar today. Let's pray that God will help you, deliver you from whatever's holding you back, what's hindering your prayers, it's hindering your walk. It's hindering your maturity. People are asking, why are you still acting up? Why are you acting like a child? You should have been past that. Why are you jealous? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? You should have been past that. Let's get delivered today. Come to the altar. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone that don't know you today, God. God, I pray that they repent of their sins and turn from their wicked ways. They do about face to you, God. And come back to you. They go from the open broad highway where everybody's saying this, this is where it's at and turn. And come back to the straight and narrow and find you Christ. Seek after you and find you Christ. God deliver their hearts. Deliver their minds God. From the things that's holding them back God. Deliver them God. Hallelujah. That are held back by hurt and pain God. Reach your glorious hand in there and touch it God. Make it all right. You are able to do that through the power of your Holy Spirit. Stretch out your hand today, God. Amen. Bless yeah. those in the name and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, I pronounce healing, hallelujah, on yeah. everyone that's caught up. Amen. And fortification. Hallelujah. I bind it up in the name of Jesus. Command it to come up and out and go yeah. where God sends you in Jesus' name. To that desert place. Caught up in sexual immorality. I bind you commanded to come up, come out in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ and authority of that name. You're caught up in perversion. Amen. I bind it and commanded to come up out and out of you in the name of Jesus Christ and come no more into them, God. Hallelujah. Sodomite spirits. Hallelujah. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to come up and come out and go to that desert place in the name of Jesus and come no more into them. Hallelujah. Wickedness and evil thoughts. I bind it up in the name of Jesus. I command you to come up and come out of them. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft spirits, I bind you up in the name of Jesus. Yeah, Hallelujah. Name of Command Jesus. you to come up and come out in the name of Jesus. God, bless everyone. Heal everyone. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, God. Yeah. Bless them to write counseling, God. Bless them to write pastoring, God. Bless them to write love, God. Teach them to love again. Give them a new heart, God. Hallelujah. Give them a new heart. Hallelujah. Yes. They will love. And people will say, what happened? Something happened because you're different. Amen. You're smiling. You're laughing. You're in love now. Hallelujah. It's easy for you to talk now. What happened? 
you get the chance to witness about the power of Jesus. God yes. bless their lives. Yes. Bless them financially, God. Bless their health. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that everyone will hear this word. Hallelujah, God, that the Spirit of God will convict them of sin and that they will repent, God, and empower them, hallelujah, to do greater things and greater works and have a testimony. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Hallelujah. Amen. We turn it back over to Pastor Charlene. To God be the glory. Blessed Amen. be the name of the Lord. Amen. We give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, hallelujah. We thank God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. What a mighty word this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I thank you, Father. I give you glory. I give you honor. Those three points were excellent. Hallelujah. Sin, underlying sin, and crucifying the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. This flesh is a mess. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord in here. Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise for being a good God, a merciful God, for what you've done for us, dying on the cross, r r r being risen again on the third day. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. There is no one like you, God. We serve a mighty God, Prince of Peace, Abba Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the word of God. Lord, we ask God that you restore back unto the man of God, hallelujah, what he poured out in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for feeding our spirits from your manservant, God, in the name of Jesus, that their word would take root in our hearts, our minds, our souls, in the name of Jesus, the importance of not being lukewarm, but be totally committed to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, I feel your presence, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Help us to just praise you, just worship you in spirit and truth. Because when we go to heaven, we're going to be worshiping you. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Thank we give you Lord. honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. You, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Woo, thank you, God. Thank you, mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, God. I could relate to what the man of God was talking about this morning. The deep-rooted issues, he's right, that's in our lives that keep us woo, bound. But God wants to deliver. I hope you were set free this morning. In the name of Jesus. If you don't know, I'm Romans 10, 9 and 10. Said, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Confess and believe. Yes, mm -hmm. believe and confess. Whichever way it go. You, but you go ahead and confess, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. And I believe that your son died and rose again on the third day for my sins. Mm -hmm. By faith, I believe it. In the name of Jesus. That's all because it's a gift from God. He loves us. He talked about love. He loved us so much that he wished that none should perish, that all should have eternal life. So, Lord, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I feel your presence. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. We can't play around with this thing. God is real. He's a God of love, but he's also the man of God says he's a God of judgment. Oh, Lord, we thank you for being a patient God. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Mm, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I hope right where you are, you feel his presence because he is real. Hallelujah. We thank God for Pastor Dicker coming this morning, preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. We thank you for Sister Suburban here this morning. We give God all the glory. We thank God for you for being a part of the ministry this morning. 
Hallelujah. I pray that you followed along in your Bibles. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just feel the presence. Just be patient with me. Sister Sharon, so good to see you on this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I tell you, our connection want to act up, but it's all right. We pray that it gets out. But I just want to thank you for tuning in. Hallelujah. I thank God for all those who wish me a happy birthday through social media, Facebook Live. I thank God for all the sisters that came out and the brothers that came out. We had one brother, my sister's fiance, coming out to celebrate my birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I pray that you be blessed back a thousandfold, not a hundredfold, a thousandfold in the name of Jesus your gifts. Hallelujah. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord, pastor strength and sister suburban strength in the Lord. We will continue to pray for you in the name of Jesus. So I'm not going to hold up your time. He prayed. The, the invitation has been uh, given and I pray that you took notes, but I will be right back here Tuesday night, ready to study the word of God with you. I believe we in Matthews 26 and I pray that you will be there at 730. You be blessed, my sister. Be blessed until Tuesday night, 730. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah.